Hey beer geeks and welcome to another attempt at a self-isolated sofa session. I'm glad there's no one here to witness how many takes that took me to say that phrase. Uh, I am continuing to thrash through my beer stash uh, and we've had some amazing people get in contact with us and tell us what's in their stash and what they're drinking. So all you've got to do to get involved is to hit hashtag beer stash on whatever social medium you choose to use and we will read them out in our podcasts or indeed on these videos. We've had some stellar beers being cracked as part of this little campaign. Uh, we've had a Thornbridge beer from 2010 by the guys who run Vessel Beer Shop, which is down in Plymouth. Um, lots and lots of lovely mixed firm stuff. Um, lots of, we had a Nectarine Lambic from De Cam, which I know is a great beer. I had that on Tour de Gers. Um, so it's wonderful to see people cracking this and there's some conversations already starting. Uh, in particular, somebody asking if we could do a video about how to age beers and which beers to age. So that is on our list to do. Thank you, Steve McCartney. Um, today I'm tasting one of the absolute prides of my stash uh, and that's a funny pun because it's a Fuller's beer. This is Fuller's Vintage Ale. Now they've been brewing these since 1997 so longer than I've been in beer. In fact I think that's the year I went to secondary school. So I don't want to be telling you stuff that might be untrue. So instead I decided to speak to a human and that particular human this time is John Keeling, former head brewer at Fuller's. So John Keeling is an absolute legend of the brewing industry. He's been head brewer at Fuller's for decades, uh, up until 2018, I think, he retired. Uh, so he's brewed every single one of these vintage ales since they came out in 1997. Uh, so I'm gonna let him do all the talking and tell you all about this beer and then come back to me to taste it. Before we do dive in with John, it's worth saying that uh, the concept of the vintage ale is a, an ale that you can either save or drink fresh. It's a barley wine based off of uh, Golden Pride, which is Fuller's barley wine. And that's about all you need to know because John is a fantastic orator, really knows his stuff, uh, and is very used to talking to journalists. Uh, so he spun a really great tale about how it came about uh, and what is so special about the Fuller's Vintage Ale. So thank you so much for taking the time. I guess the best place to start would be, I'd love to know the, the story of Vintage Ale, so where it came from. Yeah, well, Way back in 97, which was two years before I became head brewer, the head brewer then was Red Strawry, and we used to have meetings with marketing to talk about what beers we should be making. And they actually, for once, came up with a good idea, which, which, which they said, um, can we do something like a, a vintage wine? Can we do some, a special one-off beer? And uh, so we took that away and thought, yeah, we can do that. And Red suggested, why don't we just put Golden Pride, our barley wine, into uh, bottle conditioning? So other than uh, bottle conditioning, what was the difference in that first batch between Golden Pride and Vintage? Well, we then started thinking about, well, how can we make it even more special than just Golden Pride? So we thought, OK, let's brew a special version of Golden Pride. So why don't we try and get hold of the best barley that year and the best hops that year? And that became the theme, so that we would attempt to buy the hops that had won the hop competition and the barley that had won the barley competition. And we were very successful at buying those. Um, and they were no more expensive than any of the others. Just because you won a prize didn't make your hops more expensive. So we were very successful at, at doing that. Later on in the series, we, we, um, they stopped running those competitions so that we could no longer buy the best hops because the hops were no longer in competition. So what we then decided to do was we would say, OK, let's start using different hop varieties, different barley varieties that would be interesting to the drinker. So, for instance, we started a couple of years ago to introduce American hops and some New Zealand hops. And we continue that theme. 2010, which you're going to taste later on, is a return to uh, classic because it's in all English hops. It's Goldings uh, and Target, uh, there, which are our basic hops which we use in London Pride, ESB, Chiswick Bitter, etc. So we wanted to go back in 2010 to sort of re-establish um, a standard. This is this is the standard, and all the others are just riffs off that theme. 
Right, so 2010 was a return to go like, hey, this is how it used to taste, let's see yes. how it compares yes. now. And when you're brewing a beer like this, when you're brewing a beer that people are going to be aging for a long time, do you have to take anything into consideration with the recipe? Yeah, I, firstly, I think you should make it strong. Yeah. Strong beers last longer. Uh, also, we found bottle conditioning was really useful here because it continues to mop up the oxygen and it really slows the oxidation down. It doesn't stop it entirely, it's, it slows it down. And I think that changes oxidation from being a negative thing to being a positive thing. I think that's where you get a lot of the sherification, the port-like characters that come through. So I hope that was interesting. I hope you now love John as much as I do. But now it's time for me to crack this beer. I've had this in my stash since about 2015 when I picked it up for 40 quid. I think it's worth about 80 now. Um, so it's a real wrench actually opening this. So as John said, this is a sort of a return to their classic recipes after doing some American hops. Um, and this is, yeah, it was bottled in 2010. So it's the oldest beer in my stash. I think joint oldest beer in my stash. So here we go. I've just got to kind of close my eyes and, and do it and pray there's not a cork this time. There we go. She's open. So here we go, barley wine. It's a Monday afternoon. What else are you going to do when you are uh, in isolation than crack a 10 year old barley wine? <laughs> So that is a beautiful looking beer already. Lovely off color head. Uh, I got a whiff of, yeah, sherry when I cracked that and when I poured it. Wow. Loads of sherry, loads of um, crystallized like Christmassy fruits. A hint of kind of mintiness, a kind of savory, uh, but kind of floral thing, which I can't quite put my finger on. What I expect is that that is super aged hops. That is 10 years of, of a hop being in a bottle, slowly degrading, slowly breaking down, slowly creating new chemicals, all this kind of biotransformation that's happening in bottle over many, many years. All these in, incredible compounds you're just not used to smelling in fresh beer. You know, even the beers that I've aged, like Orval up to four years, it's still relatively fresh compared to this 10 year old bottle. What's blowing my mind is the condition of that beer. That head is still sticking around. So yeah, I'm getting orange pith, I'm getting brown toast, I'm getting that minty, oaky, almost tequila-esque kind of thing. Mild hints of oxidation. Like, like John said, like, you're bound to get a tiny bit of paperiness, but it's really soft. It's not like when you crack like a year-old pale ale and it just smells like cardboard. Let's do this. Pass me the mature cheese. Someone. Right, so the first thing you notice is how incredibly smooth it is. That finish is really clean. You're left with kind of a slight powdery bitterness from the, the aged tops. You're left with a tiny bit of um, kind of tannin, like almost oakiness, like a red wine, like a Rioja, but there's, there's no barrels involved in this. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, you've also got a tiny bit of lovely booze warmth uh, sort of coming up your nose when you swallow, like on the retro nasal, as they call that. Um, but otherwise, like up front, there's just loads of marmalade, brown bread, toastiness, loads of that kind of soft sherry, kind of sweet acidity thing that sherry has that makes it a great uh, aperitif. And then on the absolute back of your palate, just a little bit of roastiness. Um, it's a really, really complex beer, but it's over so fast which is kind of what you want from an aged special beer. You don't want it to become really cloying and over, um, kind of uh, overpowering your palate, and it's perfect in that way. There is that kind of mintiness. So I've had a 2015 before, and I picked it up in that as well, as well as that kind of slightly strange tequila barrel edge that's in there as well, um, which I think is, yeah, just, just really pronounced, but really slowly formed oxidation characteristics. It's a flavor that you just don't get in anything other than very, very aged beer. And I'd love if there's any scientists out there who could tell me what that compound could possibly be. You just don't taste it in like those quickly oxidized, like badly canned, badly bottled or, or very, very hoppy beers. John said that you should drink it a little bit cold and then see it progress as it warms. Um, so I'm keeping a little bit of my glass and, and, and slowly warming it up. I think it's really gonna come alive. Um, 
as it does so i'll try and keep some carbonation in it and stop that automatic swirling action that i have um, and i think it's going to get more and more marmalady really does just want to be served with a really mature cheddar uh, or a really funky um like overripe brie or something like that that's just coating your palate and this would wash it away with those tannins immediately it's baffling and beguiling and exciting and um, i'm gonna have some more like I said in the first video, my whole beer stash is online for you to look at. There'll be a link below where you can see that spreadsheet. If there's something you really want to see me taste, um, just put that in the comments below and I will make sure I get around to it because it looks like we're going to be around here uh, uh, and in here for a little while. Um, and of course, do share your beer stash online with us. We'll comment, we'll read it out on our Friday 5pm podcast, which comes out at Friday 5pm every week. Um, so you can get involved that way and we'd love to hear what you guys think of your stashes if you guys have a, a 2010 that would be the most amazing thing to hear to see if you guys got the same kind of notes as me but any beer will do which is probably the motto of this age